Hi, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Howard Heller, and I'm the president of Actual Exam Tutor. And as I was telling Farah today, um, I enjoy doing these kind of, these meetings because what I really try to do is is talk to you as somebody who was an actual student. I went to New York University. I majored in actual science, and I've been through I would say every part of actual science from from majoring in, in school, taking exams when I was in school, working in two big companies. Um, I worked at Buck Consultants when I first got out of school. Then I worked at Home Life Insurance Company. So I worked at a consulting firm and an insurance company. And then I started this comp this part of the company back in 2003. So, you know, it's hard to believe it's like 21st year already. Like probably a lot of you weren't even alive when I, when I started this. It's kind of sad in a way, you know what I mean? Like I, I look at everybody, I guess everybody looks so young, which is, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just my eyes. But, you know, I, I guess as you get older, everybody looks younger. So that's the way it goes. But anyway, you know, my real objective with these lectures, again, is to really share my insight from my experiences. I'm sure... You might have companies that come to you guys, you know, insurance companies, consulting companies, maybe to recruit you, maybe for internships. And, you know, obviously they were really trying to sell you on actual science. You know, I'm here more to give you a perspective on it from my vantage point, what I've seen. And, you know, really show you the good things and the bad things about it. Just share what my opinion is. I mean, it's my opinion, the good things and the bad things about the program, about being in the profession. And then hopefully maybe share some ideas you might, have th might not have thought of and then, you know, maybe you want to ask me questions or maybe it's something to think about. Maybe you were like, yeah, I don't know if I really want to go into this. And then maybe I share some things. Like, oh, no, you know, I know about that. And that sounds really good. Or maybe vice versa. You know, again, I'm not here to sell the profession. I'm here to really just share with you my ideas about it. So, again, I actually major in, uh, I major in actual science in New York University. The way I found out about actual science, and to this day, it's amazing, okay? I mean, so many years later... I always kind of care around. If you ask somebody, um, do you know what an accountant is? If somebody said no, you would probably think they're a moron, right? Like, like, oh, no, I never heard of an accountant. Like, what are you, an idiot? You know what I mean? But when you ask somebody still in 2024 and you say, oh, do you know what an actuary is? A lot of people still do not know what it is. It's, I mean, it's, you know, a lot more people know it now than when I went to school. But still, it's still very specialized. And you, you just... You know, this is not as well known as I think it would be at this point. Anyway, I can tell you some of the major differences to start off with from when I went to school and now with the actual um, program, major, and profession. You know, I talked to a lot of students one way or the other. And um, one thing I know is that it's it's not easy getting a job. You know, it's not, it's not even easy getting an internship. And I can tell you that when I was coming out of college, um, basically, if you could speak, <laughs> you had a very good chance of getting a really good job at a really good company because the demand for actuaries was so large, but the supply of them was, was still small. People just didn't know about the profession. So you would have companies that would just hire a lot of people out of school with, with the, knowing that a lot of people might after a year or two leave, but they were like, OK, we'll, we'll still have some people stick. And that's all they cared about. Now, in 2024, and for probably for the last know, at least 10 years, they're very particular. You know, I'm sure anybody who's tried to get an intern, I mean, I'm assuming anybody who's tried to get an internship or has tried to get a um, full-time position, you've run into realizing that it's not that easy. I mean, has anybody here tried to get, has anybody here got an internship or maybe you're a senior, you've already been offered a full-time position? Has anybody had that happen here? Okay. Have you found, did you, um, Rachel, did you find it tough to get an internship or or a full-time? Right. It's not easy. It's. I mean, it's hard to get an internship now than it was when I was trying to get a full-time position. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's unfortunate. But I will tell you this, and this is like my first major point I want to say. In 2024, if you are really interested in this profession, there's three things you want to have when you graduate. You want to pass P. You want to pass FM and you want to have an internship. They love internships. I'm telling you, these companies love internships. I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, I'm assuming number one, because they feel like you really had a taste of the profession, you know, during the summer, even if you didn't do an internship at their company, at least you have an idea what it's about. It probably shows dedication, right? That you're looking to get something while you're off from school. 
Um, and also, obviously, if you worked at that company that's offering you a full time position, maybe they're like, okay, we kind of get an idea what their what their skill set is and what their potential is. They again, they love the internship. So I'm telling you, if I was you guys, I would try to get an internship as soon as possible after maybe after sophomore year. Maybe do one after sophomore year, after after junior year, where you try maybe a consulting firm, try a, a, a insurance company, try a casualty company, find out what this is really about. I can tell you when I was in school, I didn't really have a great idea what the actual profession was about. I knew you had to take exams and I felt like yeah, I'm good in math. I never realized how hard these exams are, I'll tell you that. I mean, anybody's taking exams knows these are not your normal exams. But um it's important to pass exam. It's very important to pass exams. I mean, I'm sure you could possibly get lucky and get an internship or a full time position without passing exams. But passing those exams is so important. And I'll tell you another thing, in my opinion, which is really important about taking exams while you're in college. First of all, obviously, it helps you, right? If you pass exams, it puts you on the map. Um, you're putting a resume, companies see it, and you could leverage it. Number two, I think it's really important to understand the difficulty of passing these exams, okay? I think a lot of people, especially, we get a lot of people contacting our company, they're doing career changes, and they probably look online, right? And they say, oh, $75,000 starting salary. Oh, this sound, that sounds really good. And let's see. Oh, I just have to pass some exams. Oh, I, I, I'm good at math. You know what I mean? They don't realize how difficult these exams are. I think it's really good to prepare for these exams and get an idea of the difficulty of them and see how you do with them. Because as I always tell people, you know, they don't offer exam sittings in nursing homes or, or retirement homes. OK, you don't want to be taking these exams when you're like 75 years old. You want to be able to finish them in a, in a reasonable amount of time. And I think while you're in school, although you have a lot of schoolwork, you have exams and projects and everything, it's an opportunity to really dedicate yourself to passing some exams. And, you know, you get a feel for it because once you start working, it's a different world, right? Once you start working, you go in there, they want you to do a good job every day at work. And then a lot of times you have to study after work. It's not, the balance is not that easy. And for a lot of people, uh, you know, you probably don't think about this that much when you're between 18 and 22. But when you start working, your life changes over time, right? When you generally, when you start working, you're single, you have some friends you hang out with, you have a lot of free time. You know, over time, you, in the profession, you might get married, have kids, and your whole life changes. And you need to balance taking exams and having, you know, time for, for work, time for your family, time for your friends, just time for yourself. So learning about that balance and be able to have time management with it is really, really important. So I highly suggest that everybody take exams while you're in school because you have to first of all find out if you can if you can pass them in, in a reasonable amount of time. And number two, just learn about the challenges of them and what you need to put into to pass them. So I just highly recommend that. Now, a lot of people and have are asking this question now. They say, okay, well, I, I'm really good in math. I'm really good in statistics. Why not go the data science route? Because that's becoming more and more popular. In fact, going back to um, 2017, um, I went. I was invited to go back to my my previous grad school. So I went to NYU undergrad, and I was invited to go back to Georgia State University, which was my school I went for my master's degree. And the dean there was really ahead of the curve because he saw how important data science was. And he was really starting to implement it at that school. And I think a lot of people in the actual profession are a little bit fearful about data science, right? Like, okay, well, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to take the exams. Well, how about the person that's really good in data science who's getting hired at the same company as I am, basically the same job? You know, why am I taking the exams and they're not? And I've had this discussion with certain people, and I would tell you, like, I, I have a partnership with D.W. Simpson, so I've really gotten to know Patty Simpson really well. I don't know how many of you are familiar with D.W. Simpson, but, um, you know, I know Patty, who's been this for a long time, she's very knowledgeable, has told me that although, you know, you, you might be doing similar things in the beginning, you have a much bigger career track in actual science than you have in, in data science. So... There are people that say, you know, I'll take the data science route rather than the actual science route, but it's more limiting. You know what I mean? If you do pass exams, you get a designation, whether it's an ASA, an ACAS, 
uh, an FSA or an FCAS, it, it gives you opportunities to do things that you just not can get to do um, in, in data science. And it gives you leverage. You know what I'm saying? Like if you have that, if you have that designation, it's, it's huge leverage on your resume. So although the exams are tough, you know, it, it, they give you like a border <laughs> within your career, right? That people can't get to unless they've also accomplished what you've accomplished. And it just, you know, from a comp, first of all, it, it gives you raises at companies. It, it'll help give you promotions at companies. And again, it also gives you a lot of leverage. Okay. Now, Tell you another thing that's really good about the actual profession now versus when I was um when I first started working. So when I I'll never forget this. It's funny. I was just talking to somebody about this um today or yesterday. Um I started working at Buck Consultants. And you know, they're still around. They're, I'm sure probably a lot of you heard of them. And um at that time, I remember talking to people. I'm like, well, who are really the high up people at Buck Consultants? And you know who they were? They weren't the actuaries in general. And now the president was an actuary. And I'll never forget this guy. He was like six foot nine. And his name was William Giegerich. I'll never forget, like in the morning, you're sitting in your cube. And like, you see like Godzilla walk in. You know what I'm saying? Like you see this guy walking in and his head was like above everything. You know what I mean? Like you can never miss this guy. Not You go, you can never miss him not coming in. You always saw him. But the funny thing was, is that that time when I asked people, who are really the consultants of Buck Consultants? They were generally the attorneys who had gotten their EA certification, you know, enroll, enrolled actuary certification, which allowed them to do things in the actual profession. And since combine that with being a lawyer, they had like the number one spots. And to be honest with you, I, here I am, like I'm, I'm going through the exam process. I'm like, hey, that's so unfair. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to study all this time for these exams. And these guys just, you know, they get their law degree and then they just take the e exam, not to the saying they're easy, but they take the e exams and they're, they're, they're all high up. I didn't think that was fair, but that was a long time ago. And the really good thing about the actual profession now is that actuaries are getting like a lot more leadership within companies. You know, I think when you go back, and I think there's a lot of reasons why, and probably one of them is technology. You know, when you go back in time, right? Before you were, to be honest, before all you were alive, I'm assuming, I can't say all of you, but I'm assuming before you, all you were alive, a lot of work was still done, paper and pencil. I mean, you had to really have the math skills and the stat skills to be able to do things. Now, with software and everything, it allows you to do things that, you know, like you, you don't have to have the same level of skill to do certain things because of, you know, SPSS and SAS and, you know, using some of these, all these software things out there for statistics and everything. Well, in those days, you couldn't just depend on software. You really had to be able to do it from ground up. I think now because of technology, actuaries are not nearly as much the back office jobs anymore. I think now they're much more getting the forefront. There's much more opportunities now. Again, I think back when I first started working, the idea was if you become an actuary, you're going to be like a back office person, do a lot of number crunching, do a lot of number stuff, which of course you do. But I think now it leads into a lot more opportunities in from a whole corporate standpoint. So if you're looking to, you know, if you're in actual science, you're like, well, you know, I want to be doing other things besides just, you know, sitting back there on my computer and just doing statistical type work. Um, I think now you have a lot more opportunity if you can prove yourself. So if you're looking to become more of a, a leader, you know, uh, within the company, I think you're going to have a lot more chances. Now, of course, another good thing about the actual profession is the salaries from the standpoint of this. I mean, I would say now... The average salary to begin is, I mean, it's probably around 70 something thousand to begin. And you get opportunities, obviously, for, again, for raises for past exams. You get obviously raises if you do, if you get promoted within the business, within your company. But, um, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you're not going to get rich. You're not going to get rich, but you're going to have a nice, stable career path. And I could, and I could tell you somebody like myself who, was in corporate and now i've been doing this for a long time there is something to be said for you know coming to work um having people to work with 
having a big company as an umbrella for you, you know, you get your benefits, you get your salary, you get all these things. You have not, you know, smart people to work with and everything. There is something really good to be said for that. And I think in actual world, there's a there's still a lot of security. Now, there is pressure, and this is one thing I want to start talking about. So when you're sitting there and you're saying, Well, you know, I'm in, I'm gonna go into the actual profession, and I've been interviewing at companies. What, what type of company should I work at? Should I work at a consulting firm? Should I work at an insurance company? Should I go into casualty? You know, like, what, what should I do? And I'll just tell you, like, in my opinion, some of the differences, more from a, a not from a, what you're doing every day at work type of thing, but more from just a life standpoint. Consulting firms, because I worked at Buck Consult, and I also worked at Home Life. I can tell you the consulting firms the ones, the, the one I was at, and I, I talked to a lot of people, still seems this way. They want you to pass the exams, but it's not number one. Number one is doing a good job, okay? Num because it's 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 based on having clients, right? It's consulting, you have clients. And you have to please your clients, right? Otherwise, you lose your clients. You have a problem. Um, consulting firms still really care about you doing a good job, okay? They, they want you to pass exams, but... If you're really good at the job and you're not great at passing exams, you still have an opportunity to stay there and thrive, okay? That's one of the good things about working in consulting firm. If if you look at the exams, you say, man, these exams are tough. I passed a couple, but it, it, it took a lot of work. I'm really good at work. I'm better at working than I am at taking exams. You might think uh, maybe the consulting side is better for you from the standpoint that they're just not putting as much pressure on you. For example, passing. I can tell you this: insurance companies, the ones, the one I was at, and everything I've ever heard in my life, as long as I've been in this, I've been in this a long time. Insurance companies, you have got to pass the exams. Okay, you have to pass the exams. Don't go there thinking, well, you know what? I'll try my best. If I don't pass, I'll just work really hard. No, they're going to get the. They have a rotational program. Most of these companies. And first you're in the program, right? And you get a lot of benefits of being in the program. You get, you get days to study. They pay for your, they'll pay for your materials. You know, there's a lot of good things in it. Once you're out of the, let's say you haven't passed the amount of exams in the period of time they want, you're out of the program. And then you could be out of the company. They really put a lot of pressure on you in insurance companies. Now, if you're good at taking exams and you kind of like that, you like being kind of, you know, on your own studying for the exams and everything, and you feel like you could really get through them, that could be a really good thing for you because insurance companies, especially I think in the beginning, obviously they want you to do a good job there. But they really want you to pass the exams, okay? They're going to give you opportunities to really pass the exams. And passing exams will help you a lot within the company. It'll help you in terms of your salary. It'll help you in terms of being promoted. And, you know, it's an opportunity to gain leverage within your career path on your own. So if you feel as though passing, you know, passing exams is not that hard for you and you like a, a, an environment like insurance companies where the, the, it's very much like nine to five. You know what I mean? It really is very structured. When you think of an insurance company, I think the career path you have is very structured too. It kind of works in parallel. And I think that you, um, you'll, you know, you'll basically take your exams, you'll, you'll get increases in salary, you'll get promoted. And again, it's a nice structured path. So if you can pass exams and you feel like you want that type of environment, I think that could be a good environment for you. You know, then you have casualties. So casualty is like, you know, like insurance, it's very structured type of analysis you're doing of experience, you know, mortality and everything. Um, with insurance, it could be a lot of different types. Of, I'm sorry, consulting could be a lot of types of consulting. Like I was in pension consulting when I was at Buck. There's be different types of consulting where you deal with companies, let's say with employees, with, you know, like pension consulting. You know, you look at different things like how often do people get sick, death, you know, how much pensions do you need to have for the for the for the companies? A lot, you know, a lot of things you do, but it's based on that. You know, casualties is I've talked to people and I think they find to be more dynamic. You're doing a lot of experience, you're looking at a lot of things, but you don't have the same experience, you know, historical data. So I think it's a little bit more for what I've heard at least. I've never I never did casualty. But I've heard it's a little more creative, a little bit more dynamic. And from what I know, the salaries are a little better, okay? When you compare casualty, so, you know, versus, um, let's say, insurance or consulting on the SOA side. 
It's funny, like you have SO and CA, you know, casualty. They're always going, you know, kind of fighting with each other in a way. It's kind of funny. You know, they want members, right? They all want members. The SOA wants their members, the CAS wants members. So CAS wants you to go the casualty side. SOA wants you to go the act, you know, like the side of actual side. So it's kind of interesting, kind of like the battle between the two of them. But um, you know, it depends what you're it just depends like what you're interested in. You know what I mean? Now I will tell you this too. With software. I tell people that I speak to, um, you can go to actual science, okay, pass exams. Another good thing, really good thing, is your skills with computer skills. Some of the things that are really important now are R. That, from what I know, R is becoming more and more important. So if you have R under your belt, really good. SQL, Python, you walk in there with some good computer skills, it's huge. Because you can walk in there and they know immediately you can start doing things that they want you to do. If I was back in school right now, I would really try to get some of these um, computer skills under my belt because, again, it looks really, really golden on the resume. Okay, so I'll add that on. Internship, exams passed, and having these computer, spills, computer skills under your belt really looks powerful, very powerful. You'll, se you'll separate yourself from other people. So that's that's some of the things with in terms of when you're graduating and you want your resume to look as good as possible, I highly recommend that. Um, I'm just looking at some of my notes I made, things I want to talk about. Um, okay, so just a couple other things I want to talk about. And then I really want you to ask me questions, you know, things that go through your mind and everything about this. You know, people always ask, like, how many exams should I take? You know what I mean? Like, is more, I've heard if I take too many, it doesn't look good. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, like I heard two's the best number, three's too many. They don't like three. They don't like three. To me, it's total bogus, okay? I could tell you that when I was in school, um, ex again, because the actual science profession was not as well known and everything, um, passing exams, if you pass an exam, it was just considered that much. It was like, wow. Like, I remember, like, when I went to Buck, as, um, you know, initially, I, I was just about to have two exams passed. And it was like, I think they're going to carry me, like, on a chariot into the place. Oh, my God, he has two exams passed. I can't believe this. Like, this guy must be like Albert Einstein or something. You know what I mean? Now, two exams like nothing. You know what I mean? It's like a trickle down. It's sad in a way. You know, you know, like they always talk about like like college now. Oh, well, you know, it's it's everybody goes to college, graduate school. And then they say graduate school is nothing. You need a PhD. You know what I mean? It's always a trickle down effect with everything. But two PNF have, you know, I would want to have PNFM when I'm graduating now, if if at all possible. But when people say, oh, I heard that you don't want to have any more than that because it doesn't look good. They don't like that. I, I totally disagree with that. OK, if you get PFM and let's say you're on the SOA side and FAM, I think that really helps. OK, really. They like that. You know why? They like that. Number one, because you don't need to pass the main exams to get your ASA on the SOA side. Or let's say you pass PFM and MAS1 on the CAS side, casualty side. That's one less exam you have to take. And they know, hey, this person has the ability to pass these exams. They really do. They knocked out three while they're in college. I'll tell you the truth. I wouldn't have a problem knocking out four if I could do it. If I could pass on the SOA side, let's say, you know, again, whichever one you want to take, PFM, FAM, and maybe you want to take PA, I mean, you know, Predict, predicted analytics. That's a good one because they made, I think they made that exam specifically because that's where the, that's where things are going to, right? We're predictive analytics. So that, I think that'd be a great exam to have passed. Okay. Um, on, on the, on the CS side, PFM, MAS1, MAS2, my opinion, wow, this guy or this woman passed all these exams. Wow. This person is tremendous. I don't think it hurts you at all. Okay. The only problem, it's funny. The only problem is this, I think, and this actually happened to me. It's kind of interesting. When I when when I graduated and I started working at Buck, I had two exams passed, which in those days was like like unbelievable. Okay, it's like uh, like top in the mountain. And th there was a woman who was ahead of me, and it really was supposed to be there to try and train me in a way. You know, she had already been there a year. And it's so funny, you know, you know, you know, just as a side note, it's so funny. When I graduated, you know, I was 22 years old, I started working. 
And she was 23. And I'm like, God, 23 so old. You know, in my mind, I'm like, 23 so old. You know, it's all funny how life is, depending where you're standing. Like, you know, things seem so different depending where you are. But anyway, she was supposed to train me. And, you know, and because she'd been there a year already. And I know there was conflict because I was making more money than her. I know there was. I, I you, you could tell. And from certain people I spoke to, I know it was true. She didn't like the fact that she was being paid less. And she was like kind of like ahead of me because she was really like training me. And the reason why she was being paid less is because I passed two exams. And Buck gave you bonuses for passing exams. So when I had the two exams passed, they automatically increased, not just really a bonus, they increased your salary, okay? So it wasn't a bonus. It was increasing your salary for passing exams. So there I am making more money than her. And she's a year, she's been there a year. And I just started. And she's kind of like training me. So it causes some disharmony. I think that's the one problem that companies might be a little bit fearful about. Maybe more from like a salary standpoint and stuff like that. Is that they don't want somebody coming in that has an ASA already. And you know what I mean? And you're even though you have an ASA, you, you know, you're just starting work there. You don't have any experience. And then they have somebody training you who has like two, two or three exams passed, and you might actually be making more money because you have an ASA designation. That's a problem I think they don't want. But in terms of like passing three exams or even four, I don't think there's any problem with it. That's what I would try to do. I want to get exams passed while in school because, you know, when I was in school, I felt like I had so much work. You have so, when you're in, I had nothing personal. Like remember, I've been in college, I've been in graduate school, I've done, I've done everything. I you have a lot more free time when you're in school than when you're not in school anymore. Trust me. Nothing personal against everybody. I know you got your projects, I know you have your exams and everything, but you have much more free time when you're in college than when you're out of college. So I would really try to get those exams passed while while you're there. Now, to be honest with you, and I'll just say this as my final note before I ask uh, answer any questions. Um, and now I actually want to ask something to you guys. Um, the the biggest downside of this career path is, ex is the exams. It really is the exams. Okay, look, I'm really good. In, everybody that goes into actuarial science is good in math, right? If you're not good in math, you, you're not you're going to the wrong path if you're not good in math. I was really good in math, and these exams are, are tough. Okay, I'm there, tough. And you have to really give yourself a fair evaluation. Can you get through these exams? Okay. Because once you start working, you have to, you know, you have to do work, come home, you're tired, you got you to study for the exams. You, you, you know, you want to have a life, right? Like you don't want to just work, come home, study for exams, go work the next day and, and never have a life. You want to be making progress with your exams. And, I, you know, there's very few professions out there where you have to take exams over a prolonged period of time. And these are very unusual exams. Um, for every, I'm assuming a lot of you have taken exams. Um, the, when you, when you're in college and you take a calculus exam, you know, most people that are pretty smart, right? What do we do? The teacher tells us what sections are going to be, the test is going to be on. And we study those sections. You take the test. They're the same problems, just different numbers. It's like regurgitation. And you do well, right? You get 90, 95, 100, whatever you get. And it, it's like you study for a couple of days, maybe one day, and that's it. These actual exams are totally different. You have to study over a couple of months. I mean, you really got to put the time in or you're not going to pass. And I think I always tell people, study for these exams when you're in college because you have to learn to adapt to a totally different type of exam you're preparing for and understand the amount of work that goes into it and how challenging it is. And that's the, you know, that's the biggest downfall, I think, with this profession is, is the exam taking, is that just knowing within yourself, can I can I pass these exams? Now, I've, I've told people um, that we've had over 21 years now that sometimes you struggle in the beginning with these exams. It doesn't mean you can't pass them. We've had plenty of people have come to us and they struggle with PRFM. And, you know, somebody takes P three or four times or FM a number of times, you're like, you might say, oh, maybe it's not right for you. I mean, if you're going to struggle this much in the beginning, how much are you going to struggle in the end? And But the truth is, sometimes you learn how to prepare, and all of a sudden, you're flying. I know people that really struggled in the beginning. And then after the first couple of exams, they were passing on the first sitting. It was like exam after exam after exam on the first sitting. So I, I think it's really important to learn how to prepare for these exams. And once you know how to, see if you could pass them, you know?
So that's my that's the one tough part of this profession, obviously, is the exams. Very few professions that you have to keep on taking exams. I mean, if you come into accountant, you have to take the CPA exams, but they're not nearly as stringent as taking actual exams. You know, there's much more. I don't think there's any question the difficulty level of actual exams is higher. And it's just a longer period of time to get through them, to become um, an associate or a fellow. So, you know, that's the one tough part about this profession. And if, but if you're good at taking the exams, you 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 have a step, you have a leg up. I'll tell you that. I'm just curious. Um, so that's my, that's my speech, I guess. Um, I really like to answer questions, but I'm just curious. How many of you have heard of our company prior to, you know, today or me, you know, saying um, president of Actuary Exempt Tutor? Have you guys heard of Actuary Exempt Tutor beyond maybe learning, you know, about this lecture today or prior to that? All right. Well, I'm glad you have. Hopefully others have. Now, I just, you know, since I'm here, I guess I want to speak just a little about what we do. And then you maybe have questions about that, too. I might as well promote what we do, too, since I'm here. Um, look, I know a lot of you are, if you take exams, you probably use coaching actuaries. Um, I know, you know, they'll basically do anything possible to get you to use their product. You know what I mean? Like, if you use us, we'll... we'll you know, <laughs> but, you know, look, it's very popular and I, obviously it's great to have a self-study tool that you do a lot of problem solving with. It's, it's critical. Like, you have to have that. And, you know, I think coaching actuaries, obviously, they've been very successful and they have, a, you know, they have a tool that have helped people prepare for the exams. I know you have TIA, you have Actex. I mean, when I was taking exams in the beginning, I was using Actex. Actex was the main company out there. They had manuals. That was mainly what it is. It was manuals. It wasn't self-study resources. Manuals, you got your manual. And you study from the manual. That's how you prepare for the exams. And that, that's what I did. Um, just to kind of show what we do, you know, I always have felt like like a lot of people, it's not, especially with this level of math, with actual math, it's not easy to teach yourself. I mean, you could sit there and do problems and problems and problems. And the problem with these exams is that you could sit there, do a thousand problems and say, oh, I did a thousand problems. I'm ready for the exam. Take the exam, do terrible. Okay, and why? Because these exams are all about application. Okay, it's not. I was my my famous term. I I think I I don't think anybody's ever come with this term. It's not regurgitation. It's application. Okay, you cannot regurgitate. You cannot just memorize and go into the exam. Think, oh, I memorized. I, I memorized a thousand problems. I'm going to pass. It doesn't work. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. And I think that's when a lot of students struggle. They don't realize that you've got to learn the big picture. You got to learn what they can give you. Like if you look at a problem that you do for practice, that problem's not going to be on the test. Say, okay, what can they give me in different ways? Because they're going to give you a lot of twists and turns to that problem to kind of trick you and make you not even realize what topic they're really testing you on. It's it's amazing what these side actuaries can do with these exams. They give them six times a year, P and F M, right? They've been given for years and years and years, but somehow you take the exam and it's just problems you've never seen before. And sometimes, like you say, you see problems you're like where where is this even coming from? Like I I don't even understand. Like I studied for five thousand hours and I never saw this concept before, so it can be very frustrating sometimes. But what we do at Actual Exam Tutor, I think we combine traditional with you know like the new era of technology. So everything we do, whether it's one on one, semi private, or group, it's always having an instructor who's an expert. So if you work with us, if you, let's say, you, you know, let's just say you took an exam, you haven't struggled, you struggled, you maybe used coaching actuaries or one of the others and you didn't pass. And you're like, you know what? I, I studied on my own. I just didn't learn to the level I needed to. Well, what we do is whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, semi-private groups or group, we have instructors who are absolute experts. I mean, experts. These people are specialized to prepare you to pass the exams. I mean, they re they're just incredible. And over 21 years now, we have an, a tremendous track record of helping people pass because these instructors make such a difference in your preparation. I always tell people, you know, when you sit there and you try to learn the stuff on your own, it's not that easy. And at the end of the day, you're teaching yourself the way that your mind works, right? But when you work with an expert, they're going to show you things that you would never get from st studying on your own, never. And they show you a lot of little tricks of solving problems in better ways, shortcuts, just great methods for solving problems. And also they make sure they make sure that you master the material the way you need to to pass the exam. And again, self-study tools are very important to, to prepare for the exams. But what we do is we bring kind of like a traditional way of having instructors 
that really make just just a huge difference in your preparation and that's what we do so with that said um does anybody have questions for me about the profession I, I enjoy answering questions you know I, I i always feel like when you're in college you have an idea what it's about but you're really not totally sure so does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask me hey rachel go ahead yeah so uh my name is rachel very nice to meet you thank you for okay. coming and speaking with us today i was sure. just curious because i and besides being interested in the actuarial profession, I also mm -hmm. have had an interest in education and you pivoted to being the president of the actuary exam tutor and focusing mm -hmm. more on that educational aspect. I was right. wondering what inspired you to go in that direction. Uh, well, thanks for the question. And it's a very simple answer. Even when I was little, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit. You know, I like um, being the main cog in what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I like a situation where it comes down to me and how much I can accomplish. And I, I just like building things. I love being creative. You know what I mean? I love being creative. And um, when you have your own business, it gives you a chance, obviously, to be the main cog, but to be creative and come up with different ideas of how to do things, how to promote your company, how to offer services that could be a little different. So what I try to do with this is offer bring to the table everything I've done in actual science, but at the same time, my creativity, you know, my entrepreneurial spirit that I have and try to put it all together and just see what I can accomplish. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm just, I was never a huge corporate person. You know, some people are, some people aren't. I just don't get that excited in it. You know what I mean? I just, I personally don't. I'm not saying other people should. I mean, you know, corporate's for most people in corporate. Um, I just get, I just enjoy building something, seeing what I'm I'm capable of doing. And I think um, in corporate, I don't think you get the same exact feel, at least I didn't, you know what I mean? I only speak for myself. So really it was about kind of combining my skills in actuarial and just my, I think my entrepreneurial spirit to develop a business and see what I could do. In fact, when I went to grad school, I actually was thinking going Babson. I was going to go Babson um, in in Massachusetts, which is well known for the entrepreneurial graduate program, but I decided not to for different reasons. But I, I just enjoy being creative. And there's no, you have no better opportunity to be creative than having your own business and trying to see how far you can take it. But, you know, I'll tell you the truth. What I love about this and even speaking to you guys today is I love the fact that we're helping people. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want to be, you know, selling laptops or something. I even... Even from the standpoint, let's say, comparing us to coaching actuaries, I enjoy the fact that we get to know who we're working with. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were working with us for an exam, we're really going to get to know you. You'll, If you email emails, hey, how would I pass? It's a really great feeling for us. We get to know you on a personal level. You know what I mean? I enjoy that part of this, too. I went through all this. You know, I sat for exams. I, I did. I could relate to you, even though you're now in college and I'm not anymore. I can relate to all of you. And I enjoy kind of being part of it, I guess, in a way still in a different fun a function. But I enjoy for my not just knowing how hard these exams are and how hard the profession can be, kind of helping people as much as I can. And you know, we help you beyond just exams. Like we try to help people in terms of getting internships if possible, jobs. One reason why I partner with DW Simpson, it gives me an opportunity to be more on the forefront of helping people from a job standpoint because the passing exams is just a means to an end. So I like being part of the whole of everything. In fact, now um, I'm on Cybe Actuaries Exam Prep Council. So Cybe Actuaries has meetings. We, I get to be part of these meetings with, with a lot of these other people, be part of like what they're trying to accomplish. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I enjoy being part of it from that aspect. So that's why I pivoted to the educational side rather than working in companies. Thank you. Who else? Um, if, nobody, must, if nobody has a question, I can go. Um, I, I was just wondering, like, the format of how Actuary Exam Tutor works, because I just looked it up, like, a minute ago, and I see there's one-on-one, -on -one, semi-private, and groups. Right. Like, what mm -hmm. exactly is the format? Like, how do you work with the students? And, like, basically, what would we expect going into it? Okay, so so I'll start one-on-one. -on -one. With one-on-one, -on -one, obviously, people come to us and they might have taken the exam before and not pass. Maybe they're starting from point zero. 
And what we're going to do is match up with one of our instructors. And like I said, these are not people that just pass the exam last sitting and they're trying to make extra money. You know, like you walk around school as a flyer, helping people pass exam P. You know what I mean? No, these are professionals at preparing people to pass these exams. So they'll meet with you. We meet online. I mean, there's one in all 21 years, there's one time that they met in person. It just so happened that one of our instructors was in Tennessee and so was a student right near each other. So they met in person. But otherwise, it's always online. And basically, it could be where you're just starting to prepare for an exam and they're really helping you from point zero, really teaching you the material, doing problems that go along with the material and kind of guiding you. I think also an instructor brings so much to the table. It's not just the X's and O's of the exam preparation. It's bring accountability, create structure for you. So you're not on an island by yourself. And again, sharing things for you during the sessions because you schedule sessions, usually the hour sessions, that just take you to a totally different level. I mean, you know, I always tell people like if you went if you went to school your first day, okay, at UC Irvine, and there were no professors there, right? You walked in, there was like videos. No more, no professor. Well, we're not we're not having professors anymore. We got rid of all the professors because we make much more money by not having professors. Right? We're saving all that money. We see that see that new building. That's because we don't have any professors here anymore. Okay. I mean, how would you feel if there were no professors? You'd probably be like, "This is I didn't go to college to have no professors, right?" Because you must feel like professors bring something to the table. And when you do the one-on-one -on -one instruction, you work with somebody who's really going to get to know you. They're monitoring your progress all the time. They're, they're able to see your strengths and weaknesses. Sometimes you can't see your own weaknesses in preparation for an exam. And then you take the exam, you don't pass. You're like, wait a minute. I thought I knew that part. And they it shows I didn't do well. When you work with instructors, like the people we have, they are like a doctor uh, for a specialist, right? They will find out where you're weak, where you're strong, make sure we build up the strengths and you go into that exam ready to pass. With semi-private, it's always been students coming to us. Like you might have three or four people that maybe you study with at your school that for, let's say you're all studying together for exam P and you're like, you know what? It'd be great if we had like instructor we could all work with together and we'll actually have instructor to work with your little group. Maybe you have two, three, four people and you want to have just instructor you really go over things with. And it could be it could be weekly sessions, it could be daily sessions, it could be once a month, whatever it is. We're here to help you pass the exam. And so you could bring like your little group of people and you'll you'll schedule sessions to meet with the instructor. Group, we just had a group program for exam P that just ended um, a few days ago. And ours is always the same thing. It's like a boot camp style program that we've had. So it usually starts like five weeks before the exam sitting. And the whole idea is this. We assume if you're serious about passing the exam, you've been studying. Like you don't come to us five weeks before the exam and say, well, I haven't studied at all, but I, I saw this program. You know what I mean? Like we assume you're studying. So we want to take your level of proficiency where it's at and take it to a totally different level. So there's a lot of things that are part of these group programs. There's lectures where the instructor is really focusing on problem solving. There's You could actually meet with the instructor privately to go over things. There's a lot of features to the program over five weeks. So it's like the final five critical weeks leading to the exam sitting where we're here to get you to a totally different level of knowledge. Because if you go to one thing I can tell anybody who has not taken an exam yet, if you go into the exam not ready to pass, you never pass, okay? I've never heard of somebody say, I can't believe I passed. I didn't really know it. That will never have happened. What will happen is you go in there really knowing it and you don't pass, okay? That will happen. But it will never happen that you say, I can't believe I passed. I didn't really know it. You know what I mean? Forget it. That, that is not happening. So, like with the group program, we tr we have a, a tremendous instructor who's really there over five weeks to get everybody to a, a position where they walk in that exam sitting, they're ready to pass. And part of these exams, too, to me, at least it's confidence. You know, you have to have confidence when you go in there. And how do you have confidence? You go have confidence by feeling you're prepared. And because when you do these problems the day of the exam, it's not, again, it's not memorization. You have to trust the process. Like you'll see a problem and you're not even sure you're doing it the right way, but you kind of follow the process, right? And you get to an answer. It's there and, you know, hopefully it's right because they're always trying to trick you with the multiple choices, right? But, but you have to trust yourself, right? The process and part of its confidence. I think even the instructors help people just not getting phased or yet. You know, sometimes you take the exam and there's a lot of pressure on you. You put a lot of time into your preparation and all of a sudden 
You walk in and the first couple problems you can't do. And what starts happening? You start panicking inside, right? Because you know the clock's running. You couldn't get the first two right. You're like, oh, no, I can't believe this, right? And you're like, you start reading the next problem really quickly. You're like, I got to get through this next one really quickly because I'm behind already. You start panicking. And with these exams, once you start panicking, you're in big, big trouble, okay? I think working the instructors, they help you in, even psychologically to prepare for these exams. Because that's part, that's part of these exams too, not getting stressed out at, you know, during the exam. On the skate A, if I know it, the cream will rise to the top, right? If I know it. I'll see a problem I know, then I'll, there'll be a problem I get really quickly, and all of a sudden I'm back, right? All of a sudden I'm back now. And then you get your confidence going. So with the group, it's if I, it's generally five-week programs are really getting you in a top position to pass the exam. Any other questions? Oh, I have a question. Sure. My name is Brandon Nguyen. And hey, Brandon. I have a question. Which um, schools do you think have the best actuarial science presence? Best actual science what? Uh, presence. Oh, presence. I mean, are you talking about like when you interview for a company? Like, uh, like what school? Like university? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, again, uh, the schools that, let's put it this way. Schools that stand out from an actual standpoint when you interview, like they'll say, oh, you went there. Are going to be schools like um, Drake, um, St. John's, UConn, University of Connecticut, um, Florida State University, um, you know, look, there's a lot of them. You know what I mean? There's a lot of them to stand out. I mean, you see, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure about you. You probably know better than me how well UC Irvine stands out. I mean, you tell me, is that school, does that, when you have UC Irvine, do they recognize it? Like, that's a really good program that you came from? Because I'm not, I'm not really sure either way. Wait, I think you also mentioned SP too. You said you mentioned SP has a lot of good recruiters. Say it one more time, please. I think you mentioned UCSB. UCSB. Yeah, UCSB. Um, SB, yeah, University of California, Santa Barbara. That's that's I think pretty well, very well received, definitely. Um, Penn State University, Townsend University. Um, just these are just off the top of my head that I'm thinking. Um, you know, it's a lot, look anybody on that anybody on that list, right? On the SOA list is recognized. You know, they recognize them right there. So if you're on there, if you're on the if you're on the SOA list of schools that are recognized, that's a good list to be on. All right. Uh, Thank obviously, you. like I said, Purdue University. But again, again, I never went to Purdue University. I can only speak for students we've had from Purdue. I I just heard over and over again that they're not they don't put a lot of emphasis on helping you pass the exams. And like if you're like ranked like a number one program. I would think that that's going to be like one of your key objectives, you know, is helping you pass exams and helping you get a job at school. I, 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 I just, you know, again, I don't, I don't know what goes into the formulation for a ranking. I mean, NYU too. I mean, I went to NYU. I mean, that's, you know, that's considered good, but I don't think their program is nearly as big as some other programs, you know, University of Michigan, um, Clemson University, um, you know, like I said, I mean, if I look at the list, I can pinpoint ones that stand out that at least to me stand out, you know, but I'm yeah. not sure how, they, I'm not even sure how they get the rank. to be totally honest with you. I don't know how they get the rankings. I'm not sure what, where the, where the rankings come from. I don't, I don't know. All Obviously right. Drake is known because coaching actually is in Iowa and Drake's in Iowa. You know what I mean? So you have that with so Drake. As long as like it's on the SOA list, it's good. I think I think it's really yeah. I think I mean I would think right if you're on the SOA list, they have a list, right? If you're on that list, that's a good list yeah. to be on. You know what I mean? Sure. Is you you see everybody's on that list? I think right. Uh, are they on that I list? I don't think so. I only saw Riverside, Santa Barbara, and UCLA. Okay, maybe they're not. They maybe not. Maybe that maybe it's a list they could get on. You know, for sure. Yeah, maybe they could maybe apply to the SOA to be on that list. Yeah. You know, but but you know, like I, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think the school is going to get. You know, it's I I think. Look, if you you know, look to be totally honest, let's face it. If you went to Princeton University, right, and you have two exams passed and an internship, the Princeton University looks good. You're right; it's an Ivy League school, looks really good. But I don't think like the school that you went to is is nearly the most important thing. I think the most important thing is what you accomplish at the school. Okay. I think that's the most important thing is what you accomplish. 
And again, two exams and internship is what I would at least go for while I was in school. Try to accomplish that. Two exams and internship, I think, is, will look really, really good on the resume. And and again, the computer skills. Okay, I don't think they're so. I you know you know it's it's not like finance where you graduate and they want the people from the Ivy League schools. You know what I mean? Like that. Like I've I'm an MBA in finance, and they want finance companies like to have people from the top. You know the top ten schools. They want people from the top ten. You know what I mean? It's the way it is. You know. But I think in actual science, I don't think the school is nearly as critical, just from the standpoint of the name of it on your resume. I think the important thing, again, is what you accomplish at the school. I think that's the most important thing. For sure, yeah. It's definitely something that churches will do work harder. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't think, like, because I don't think that's fair, right? I mean, if you go to one school of another, it's what you, especially taking the same exams, right? Like, like somebody can say, well, I went to this school, they went to that school, but it's hard to get, it's hard, it's a tougher school. This Well, taking actual exams to standardize, right? You can't say, well, I went to UC Irvine and they went to Princeton and they we both passed exam P, there's, there's no difference, right? There's no difference, right? It, P is P, right? FM is FM, right? It doesn't matter. So, and that's, one good thing about the exams, they're standardized. So if you pass the exam, you pass the exam, right? You have that for life. You have that for life that you passed it. It's going to be exactly equivalent to somebody taking exam P in any other school or any other, you know, wherever they take it. So that's that's a good thing about the exams. It's not like, well, I have a 4.0 average from this school and they have 4.0 average from that school, but everybody knows that school is better. So the 4.0 means more. You know, it, it, that's the good thing about these actual exams. It doesn't matter where you take it, what school you go to, or where, wherever you live in, in the country or the world. If you pass it, you pass it. It's all matters. And, and getting internships at good companies, very, very good to have, too. All right. Thank you so much for the answer. Yeah, sure, sure. That was really no insightful. Thank you. A big question. Do you like, because I'm going to be doing a lot more of these in this year. Do you guys like this format? Of, you know, like I said, I'm really just trying to share my experiences more than anything else. You know what I mean? And just kind of like tell you where I'm coming from and what I think. And, um, you know, not necessarily, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to sell actual science or not sell it. I'm just trying to give a perspective of what I think based on my own experiences. So I guess I'll say, I hope, hopefully you like the, I hope you like the format. Uh, well, thank you, Joshua. I agree. Thank you very much. Now, of course, I, you know, I, I don't want to be like, I, of course, I would love you guys to use our services. I'm happy to at least, I guess I could share with Farah and she could share it. So, you know, maybe she could send something to you guys that could share like what we do, because I will tell you that um, we help many people pass exams. I mean, we really have a great track record. We have a great reputation. That's probably why I'm on the SOA Council is because the reputation we have over 20 years. And um, these exams can be frustrating. You know what I mean? You put so much time into taking them and you want to pass. That's I always say that's the reward for the studying is passing them. And although these self-study resources are, are obviously very important, for many, many people, it's not, you need more. You need more to pass. A lot of the companies, they want to create like a paint by number system. You know, if you do this, if you do this, you'll pass. It's, trust me, it, it just doesn't work that way. It, it'd be great if it did, but it doesn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, these exams are tough, and a lot of people need more than just doing practice problems to pass. That's the way it is. SOA wants to make it tough. You know, they want to weed people out. They're not trying to get you to be part. They're trying to weed you out. They want to see, do you really have what it takes? And they're going to try to weed you out just like the CS is going to try to weed you out. You know what I mean? So, and I always tell people, don't feel bad if you fail an exam in the beginning or anything. You got to realize that they're only passing, you know, at 40, 50%. I mean, everybody taking this exam is smart people. This is not, you know, you're competing against really bright people to try to get in that top percentile. So it's not easy, but it's, it's doable if you put in the effort. It's definitely doable if you put in the effort and you have the, and you have the natural ability to. All right, who else has a question, please? So I have a question about the your, your um the program. Is it possible sure. for us to get a discount for the for the after AVM tutor? Program? Yeah, in fact, you know what? I would love. I mean, I would love you guys. I'll give everybody a good discount to try it.
so that you guys can see what I'm talking about and how impactful it is. You know, I think that, you know, when I went to school, it was different, but I think now, probably going back to K-12, you guys, everything you do in math is like these, you know, on the computer probably, right? Doing a lot of the stuff with it. Math lab, whatever, you know, whatever it's called. And I think that people get so caught up in just these self-study resources and they think, oh, if I don't pass, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't pass using this. And you don't realize it's not, I'm telling, you know, I I understand people have an ego, they're good in math and they want to do the study on their own. Like, I don't need you. I don't need any help, right? I don't need any help. I can do it on my own. Leave me alone. The only thing that matters is passing. You know what I mean? That's all that matters is passing. That's nothing else matters. And so many people get caught up in these self-study resources thinking, oh, yeah, I did everything they told me to do. I'll, I'll probably pass the exam. And you don't pass. Like, I don't know where I went wrong. Again, just understand that teaching yourself this material is very difficult. And you can only teach it to the level that your brain can see it, right? When you work with somebody else who's an expert, they could say, they could say, hey, Brandon. Do you realize how this problem relates to that other problem? Do you see how they could test you with this in this way, this way, or this way? You don't have anything interactive when you're doing self-study resources, right? You know what I mean? You have to, you have to kind of connect the dots. And that's what these, these instructors do. They help you connect the dots. You know what I mean? Because believe me, I've taken enough of these exams and failed them to know how frustrating it is. You know what I mean? And and just to tell you, like, kind of like a joke in a way, I mean, it's not, it's not really a joke, but kind of like a joke. You know, when I, when I was taking the exams, it was all pencil and paper, right? I know now with the exams, sometimes they'll have the first day you do pencil and paper and then everything's over the, you know, everything on the computer. And I used to go um, walking to MetLife. It was always at MetLife. And I, I lived in New York. I used to go to MetLife and they had this gigantic conference room, like huge conference room, right? And you walked in there. And there were like, I don't know how many, there were like hundreds of people taking the exam. Okay. A lot of people taking the exam. Okay. And, you know, you would get, so of course, with pencil and paper, it's not going to be graded that day like it is now. Right. So you take the exam. By the way, in those days, the exams were only given in May and November. Okay. So if you did not pass, you had a half a year to think about it. Right. I mean, you can't just study if you don't, you know, if you didn't think you passed, you can't just study for six months straight. You can't give yourself a break, right? And over time, you start forgetting things. Now, what's really good about it is that if you don't pass P, let's say, it's only eight weeks away, right? The exam thing is only eight weeks away. So you take maybe a take, take a week off, you know, get your head together, get your confidence back, and then attack it again, right? So that's the really good thing. That's a really good thing about it. But this is what I was going to say. So when I was taking the exams, you took a pencil and paper, and the SOA would mail you the results. And I always remembered it was a it was an envelope with a blue slip of paper on it, and it said, you know, sorry of actuaries. And you know, you knew what it was an invitation to go to dinner when you got in the mail. You know what it was? It was your exam results. And I remember I would take it and go outside somewhere where I was alone and treat it like it was the results of a biopsy. Okay. Like, if all you know what a biopsy is, okay? I would treat, open the envelope like I was getting the results of a biopsy. And, like, you just hope you passed. You know what I mean? You just were hoping for a six or higher. That's what you were hoping for. You know, because you felt so... And that's one thing about these exams, too, for people who have passed them. It really is a great feeling when you pass them. It really is, because you know you accomplished something. You have achieved something. When you pass these actual exams, you have achieved something because you're competing against really smart people. These exams are tough. And you know that all that work you put in counted for something. You know, it, it, you paid the price and you won. You know what I mean? And there's a very good inner feeling for that when you pay the price and you win. And winning is passing the exams. And it's a great feeling. And I know for myself now, I guess in a way, even though I don't do the instruction, um. You know, I'm on the other side, uh, but I also get when people contact us and they tell us they pass. It's such a great feeling for me. What a great feeling it is. I mean, I remember just a quick story. I, I can send you this guy. I mean, you maybe you enjoy seeing this. I have, we do live testimonials with some of our students. There was a woman, 39 years old. I mean, she was she said this during the the, the live testimonial. 39 years old. She had an infant child. She was not married. 
she had passed everything to become an S to become an ASA except for one exam. She could not pass this exam. It was amazing. She had passed everything else. She just could not pass this exam. And she'd been taking it for three years. And if she did not pass in this sitting, they were changing the exams to a new format where she would have to take two more exams that she had never studied for before. So imagine this. You're one exam away from passing to get your ASA, but if you don't pass in this sitting, you're going to be forced to take two new exams. Can you imagine what that must be like? The human, you're 39 years old with, with an infant child. You have a regular job, and and this now. So and she she just wasn't even coming close to passing. So anyway, she contacted us, and she worked with one of our instructors. And she not only did she pass, but she got eight on the exam. I'll never forget this. And it made me really emotional. She told me how when she saw the results in the computer that she passed, she started crying. And it made me feel so good because I knew that we had such an impact in her passing. And believe me, obviously, before she came to us, I'm sure she was using all these other self-study resources. And this is a woman who had passed everything else except for this one exam. She just couldn't pass it. And you know, you know what a great feeling that is when you get to know these people on a personal level and they pass their exams and they tell you they pass. What I tell you, what 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 an incredibly great feeling it was for me, and that's what I love about this too. People are doing things that I that I did previously, right? And I know it's a great feeling when we help because we're helping you in your career path, right? It's not just an exam; it's life. You know what I mean? It's life. It's it's your career. It's 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 knowing that you pass the exam. I'm telling you, if you pass one of these exams and you never go into actual science, I guarantee you 50 years from now, there will still be a good feeling inside you that you pass that exam. You'll still sell somebody at some party or something. Hey, yeah, I once was in actual and I passed an exam. It's still a great feeling because you know you accomplished something that most people cannot. So in regards to the question about discounts, look, I, I'll, I'll offer whatever discount I can for you guys to try this. I love for you guys to try our program because I think you'll see the impact it'll have on you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I just want to see you pass. You know, I tell everybody that all I care about is, is you passing because I know how I'm, important it is, you know? And speaking about exams, oh, speaking oh, about ahead. exams, how many, how many exams do you suggest doing per year? Like, I was thinking about doing two per year. Is that like reasonable or? Well, you're undergraduate. Uh yeah. Yeah, I would try. I mean, I would try to pass PNFM at least. I I mean, if possible, get a third one in because All right. that third one really kind of starts separating you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It, it really starts separating you a little bit. So I would, if if possible, I would try to pass three, but I would definitely try to pass two if possible. You know, definitely two if possible. Hopefully three. Again, you want to separate yourself from the competition. You know what I mean? You want to go an interview where you all have similar maybe backgrounds, but but you have three exams passed and somebody only has two exams passed. Sep it's a separation, you know? Uh, you spoke about how important it was that we have um, that we have an internship. Yeah. What companies do you think are like the best for that? Where do you think like the well, best candidate you've seen go to. What I would try to do is, I mean, if possible, I would try to get into a big company, okay? And that would be my preference. First of all, obviously, what I would try to do is, if you know right now that you're interested in insurance companies, I would first will try to get an internship at an insurance company. And uh, and what I would try to do, too, is this, because I'll be totally honest with you, and, I, and I'll tell you this, too, I can do this for you guys also. I want to say also is that through my partnership with D.W. Simpson, and to me, like, and I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. The reason why I want to part with them, like I said, is because I want to be part of the job market in my own way. But there are recruiters out there that, you know, in my opinion, I'll say that in my opinion, you don't want to deal with, okay? I trust these people. You know what I mean? A lot of recruiters, I don't think you can trust because they're out for themselves first before you. You know what I mean? I, I think D.W. Simpson, they really want to try to find the positions that are going to be best for you. You know what I mean? Like these companies, they can make commissions off of, People gain jobs, right? And some recruiters could have the attitude, look, I just want the commission. I, I don't, hey, if they're at the wrong company, that's not my problem. I want to be with a company that really cares about you being at the right company. And I feel like that's one reason why I want to connect with them. But one thing they'll do too, if you're interested in talking to somebody about the job market, I can personally get you a, a, a you know, a, a meeting with one of them. 
And it won't be like just a blind resume coming in. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll tell them they'll be looking for your for your information and you'll be able to um speak to somebody from get a good idea about the job market. You know, generally they can't help people get jobs coming out of college because the way that it works now is that the companies kind of tell them what they're looking for, they're looking for generally more experienced people that they go through recruiters for, but they still can't give you some really good information, you know what I mean? From a job market standpoint. But I would answer this this, this way. What I would try to do is, first of all, if I'm in insurance, I try to get insurance um, internship. If I like consulting, a consulting internship. But what I would do a little research on, if possible, is, okay, which companies offer full-time positions beyond the internship? Are there companies out there that have, and I'm not sure, that would be a great thing maybe to talk to them about, T.W. Simpson. Are there companies out there that offer that seem to offer more often full-time positions if they really liked you at the internship. Because let's face it, look, if you intern in a company and you really liked it there and they say, hey, we would like to hire you when you graduate, that'd be that'd be great, right? That you have a job waiting for you when you graduate. So I would try to do that if possible. So that's what I that's what I would try to formulate in my mind when I'm looking for what company's best to interrupt with. But I would try to get a big company because if you're not going to work at that company beyond your internship, it's always good to have big companies on the resume. It's just the way it works. You know what I'm saying? Just the way it is. You know? Then a company that, like, almost nobody heard of before. But any internship is better than no internship. You know what I mean? Any internship is better than none. But bigger company on, on the resume will look better than an unknown company on the resume. Okay, thank you. For sure. For somebody that's kind of, like, pivoting from a different career to actuary, mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend them doing, per se? When you say from a different career, how long have they been at school? Uh, just one or two years. Okay, one or two years. Um, like, what were they? Are they? Were they? Are they pivoting from something that has some relationship to either actual science, finance, accounting, anything like that, or or is it oh, yeah, completely it's like accounting? Yeah, accounting or banking. About... Okay, well, at least there's some relationship. I mean, if you're only at school one or two years. I would personally, if pot, if hey, if you could still do an internship, if you live maybe, you know, if you don't need the income and you do an internship, that if you get one, that'd be great. But again, the great thing about the about actual profession, the bad thing are the exams, but you can use the exams to your benefit. You know what I mean? I would definitely try to pass an exam. In fact, I was just talking to a guy today, okay, who was in um he was in the investment side of his career for invest, he did investments and he wants to go into actual science now. He's been out of school for a while. But, you know, he knows. Pass an exam. Pass an exam. Get your name on the map. You know what I mean? Get on the map. That's what I would tell somebody who's looking for a career path. I mean, one or two years at school is not a big deal. Once it's more than that, it becomes a problem in different ways, which you got to overcome. But I would say use the exams to your benefit. Pass an exam or two still. It will show them that you're really dedicated, that you can pass exams. And I think it, it could really help open up a door for yourself. Anybody else? All right, well, I mean, uh, if I'm still here if anybody has any questions, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send to Farah um, just information about, um, well, I'll send some things about if you are interested in setting up um, a meeting with D.W. Simpson, which I think is helpful. I'm also going to send you information about working with us. And again, I would love you guys. I'll, I'll, trust me, I will offer you a good discount to work with us, whether it's for PF, for any exam. I don't care if it's for exam, you know, uh, nine of the casualty. If you if you want to take a fellowship exam while you're in school, but I'll, I would like I would love for you guys to see how much of a difference we make. You know what I mean? I, I would love for you to see the, the difference we truly make and how just in spectacular these instructors are they really are just just they're just incredible they really are so i'll stop the recording now and again if it, um